High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Shock Tactic. to tell you the story of the bravest man I know. I am Sam Rubeck, Chief of American Intelligence in the Caribbean sector. So, you can take it for granted I've met plenty of courageous men in my line of business. However, one man stands head and shoulders above the rest, Davy Jackson, whom we knew as our suicide man. Because of a tragic happening in his past, Davy had lost his zest for life. The death wish was on him, which made him adopt the craziest tactics. Yet somehow he always came unscathed from the most difficult assignments. Fortunately, I didn't know about this psychological fault on the day I called him into my office in Miami. Morning, Mr. Rubeck. Operations directed me to see you. Take a seat, Davy. Thanks. Now, something urgent has cropped up. Our Cuban network is about to blow up in our faces unless something's done mighty quick. A defection to Galvez mob? It could be. Our top man there is in a panic and expecting to be arrested at any time. Most of his colleagues are already being interrogated, and uh, let's not have any illusions. Some of them will speak. Now, you know Cuba well, according to your dossier. Well, I had fought for a spell with Galvez in the mountains before I realized which way he was going politically. What I'm going to tell you now must not be repeated outside this room, understood? Fully. You have heard of Dr. Roberto Hernandez? Yeah, Galvez is Minister of Economics, isn't he? I'll update you, Davy. For the past two years, he's been the Minister of Security, the boss of Cuba's espionage organization. What about him? For the past 12 years, he's been one of our agents. <laughs> you just gotta be kidding. Well, I'm not. And he's the guy who's in a panic. Now, Hernandez is too valuable to lose, so I want you to get him out. Now, get in there quickly and out even faster. Can you do that? Uh, the kind of mission I've been looking for. Now, look, Davy, I'm not looking for heroics. I just want Hernandez safe and sound here in Miami, get it? And if he's already dead or imprisoned? Pull out, and I'll just have to sit here and sulk. Okay. If he's still on the loose, I'll get him out for you. Now, what about transport? We'll fly you in and ship you out. From Havana? But that's going to be... No, a... not Havana, Davy. He's far. He's from an old capitalist family which had vast sugar estates on the eastern part of the island. Although they were nationalized, his family still manages them, and he has a large house near the coast at a place called Arizzo. Yeah, I know it. We'll drop you over to the cane fields tonight and pick you both up on the beach by submarine tomorrow night, or rather, four in the morning. It'll give you just over 24 hours. Now here. See this this map of the coast? Mm-hmm. Uh, just there. Okay? <sighs> Suits me just dandy. But isn't it a kind of unusual to go to all this effort to save just one man's skin? I'll give it to you straight, Davy. It's not his skin we want, but a black diary he has, which contains the name and description of every agent in their network. (laughs) Now, that makes sense. Oh, another thing. He's got a young daughter. If he wants to bring her along, that's up to you. I'll give you a full briefing just before takeoff. At three in the morning, the small aircraft flew high over Davis' destination. It circled around once, and the door was open for him to make his jump. You all ready, Captain Anderson? Yeah, I'm just waiting for countdown. Glad it's you going down there, not me. (laughs) Well, if you hang around too long after I've jumped, there's a chance you'll get shot down. Now, how would you like that? (laughs) Nasty thought. Hey, here it comes. Five, four, three... Two, zero. Good luck. And same for you, cowboy. The moment Davy Anderson jumped, the plane peeled off back towards the coast. On his descent, Davy saw very few lights on the ground which would help him pinpoint his exact position. He landed in the middle of a cane field and decided to stay there until it started to get light. The first glow of dawn revealed a low hill on his left and distant mountain peaks 
directly ahead. Uh, let me take a look at that map again. Yeah. I reckon the house must be at least three miles over there. And the coast is four miles behind me. Right, Davy boy. You'd better start walking. As the sun appeared on the horizon, a police truck entered the front courtyard of the Hernandez house. this noise at this time of the morning. Where is Senorita Hernandez? She is in bed, of course, where most sensible people are. I'll go up and see her. Oh, you cannot do that. I it can do anything right. I like in this oh. area. How dare you, Francisco? Ah, so you are awake, my bueno. First you arrest my poor father, and now you come marching into my bedroom. Ah, you look so beautiful like that, Rosita. A pity I have to arrest you. Arrest me? For what? The same charge as your traitorous father. My father is not a traitor to you, but... Get changed, Corrida. We can argue about that later. Very well. Please wait outside. <laughs> no. I'd much rather stand here and watch the scenery. I refuse. First you leave this Do room. Do as I order. Or I'll have you dragged to my headquarters. Naked. All right, Francisco. But these last two days you've shown me what kind of a man you really are. I have always been the same. Always admired you. Even when I was just one of your father's overseers in the cane fields. <laughs> and now you are the political commissar for this area. You think you can take advantage of me? You're a beautiful sight, Rosita. Turn your eyes away, you lecherous pig. If only you had ever accepted me as a husband when I proposed... Uh, we could have been happy together. And you wouldn't be in the danger you are now. Danger, Francisco? Nothing can be proved against me, nor my father. The Ministry of Justice in Havana seems to think differently. My father, how is he? You haven't hurt him. He's... Your father is all right. I don't like that look on your face, Francisco. Tell me the truth. We will talk about your father later. Are you ready to go yet? You're dressed so. Just let me brush my hair. But you see, Francisco, those morons in Havana will make such fools of themselves. When Davy came within sight of the big old house, he was in time to see the army truck pulling out. In the kitchen, Carletta, the elderly family retainer, tried in vain to stem the tears. <laughs> Who, who are you? It's who? all right, senora. I, I'm a friend of the family. Carrying a machine gun like that. Dr. Hernandez knows why I'm here. Now, please go and call him. You are an Americano, yes? Yes. Now, please do as I ask. It's very urgent. See, I know why you are here. And you are too late. Why? <laughs> Yesterday, the district commissar arrested the doctor. And only a few minutes ago, he took her away, senorita Rosita. His daughter? Si. Blast! Oh, so I've come here for nothing. Oh, there are many soldados around. It is better you hide till tonight. In those clothes, they would arrest you without question. I'm not here to hide and run away. If they come close, I'll start shooting. I have some hot coffee here and some food. That swine, Francesco Lopez. I know what he was told to the poor child. I'd be glad of something to eat and drink. Gracias. And while I'm having it, maybe you can tell me something about the local setup. Like, uh, who's this Francisco Lopez guy? See, si, he is the commissar. Oh, everybody is afraid of him. And many have died by his hand. Mm -hmm. He was once a junior overseer. And then he turned red and joined the political place. But always he's had an eye for Senorita uh, Hernandez. What does she think of him? She hates him. Uh, tell me, where will the doctor and Rosie to be held? In the village. Lopez has a small office with two cells in the back where he keeps his prisoners until they are transferred to the prison at Matanzas. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Have you ever been inside? Only once when I had to take a message from the doctor to Lopez. Is it guarded? Oh, see, always. 
There are two armed men outside. Inside, there will be three or four. Could you draw me a small plan of it and its position in the village street? Uh, Maybe I haven't wasted my time coming here after all. There is only one street in the village. Oh, that's great. That makes it easier still. Uh, Do you know what farm vehicles there are? See, at the back, there are three tractors, and out in the fields, there are two more. Good. Does there happen to be a bulldozer? When Commissar Lopez arrived at his headquarters, he sat Rosita opposite him at the desk. Near the door, two soldiers lounged on a bench, and outside, two others stood guard. What are all those papers for? They are questions I have to ask you. I refuse to say a word. Let me see my father. First, you tell me where the book your father kept is hidden. What book? I know nothing about a book. Please, for your own sake, Rosita, don't be difficult. Cooperate, and I may be able to help you. Am I to tell you lies? Is that what you want? When your father was interrogated, he told us he had given you this book only hours before we arrested him. I know for certain he was not lying. You're lying, Francisco Lopez. My father would never tell you that. I was ably trained in getting the truth out of prisoners. You tortured him. It was necessary. I hope it won't be so in your case. Let me see my father. Alone. Very well. If you think it will help, come with me. There he is. Look at him. Oh, you murderers! I'm sorry we didn't have time to clean him up. Not worth it now, because we'll be burying him later this morning. Come, let's go back to my office. No, don't leave me here. You do as I order. (laughs) Sit down again. Why, Francisco, did my father deserve that? Orders from Havana. We executed him late last night. And I have his signature here on a document that implicates you. Yes, and I'm proud of it. I've helped the guerrillas in the hills with food and information. I passed other information on to the American CIA. I'll sign all the papers if you like, Francisco. Then you can take me outside and shoot me. And I'll be glad because it makes me a true patriot for Cuba's freedom. Not a crawling cane rat of a government lackey like you! Determined to put on a show, even though it might be in vain, Davy found a bulldozer and headed straight for the village. As he ran it up the street, the few people he passed merely stared at him with puzzled expressions. He spotted the commissar's office, outside which the two guards whiled away their boredom in conversation. They only looked up with interest when Davy swung the steering wheel and the huge bulk of the bulldozer turned towards them. Their machine guns came up and chattered for an instant. the bulldozer's shovel hit them and threw their bodies against the wall. As the front wall of the building crashed in, David jumped from his seat and ran into the building, which was veiled in a dense curtain of dust. The two guards inside had been killed by falling masonry. In mortal terror, Rosita threw herself against the far wall. Commissar Lopez threw himself to the floor as a burst of bullets from Davy's machine pistol passed over his head. Being no hero, he played dead. Hernandez, are you in here? Who, who are you? I'm Rosita Hernandez. Well, that's something anyway. Where's your old man? I've come to collect you with a one-way ticket to the States. My father's dead. They shot him. Oh, my. I'm sorry about that. Well, I suppose we'd better get the heck out of here before the army arrives in force. Look, I, I wonder if you know anything about a black book your father kept. Yes, it's... yes, I have it hidden at the house. Oh, that's great. We can pick it up on the way to the coast where a sub's going to pick us up uh, tonight. I reckon this bulldozer's too slow for a getaway, though. There's a truck around the back. We can use that. Good girl. Let's move.
Luckily, the key was in the ignition. Davy pulled out at speed, and they raced off down the village street, which was now lined with curious but non-belligerent peasants. Hearing them go, Francisco Lopez raised his head from the floor and smiled. If he played this right, it could mean fame and promotion. So, they go to the house, and if I miss them there, I can meet them at the coast. While Lopez alerted the military and changed into a clean uniform, Davy and Rosita arrived at the house without any further incident. From a hiding place in her room, she extracted the vital book, which had been carefully wrapped in a waterproof material. Father knew somebody would come, and he gave this to me to hand over. Thank you, Rosita. It could be worth many lives. Right, let's go. What about Carletta? Has she any family here? Yes, in the hills. But if Lopez catches her, he'll murder her out of spite. I know him. Okay, so we'll take her with us. She is old, though, so I hope she can keep up. We have made up a parcel of food for your journey. Oh, Grazia Caletta, will you come with us? To America? No, not now. I'll go back to my family. Perhaps one day you will come home again, and you can send for me. See, si, perhaps. Are you sure you don't want to come? You'll be safe. Oh, I'm sure, senor. Let me put this food in the truck for you. There's bread and milk and some meat. Hey, what are we waiting for? I just want to collect a change of clothes. As Carletta opened the front door, she heard a shouted order from behind the wall at the gateway. Filago! Ah! Davy, they're here! Carletta! You're right. Ah! You're right, the house is surrounded. Have you another gun? I'm not going to let them take me again. I've only got this one. But this haversack is full of grenades. Anyway, relax. They're not going to take either of us. You think we can fight our way out? I'm darn sure of it. All we got to do is the unexpected. Now, you see how that truck is parked outside? Come on with your hands up and unarmed. I'm giving you one minute to make up your mind. Are you ready? Yes, when you are. Okay. Now! <laughs> Davy and Rosita ran out of the front door at once, he flinging hand grenades, and she firing wildly with a gun. So shaken were the soldiers by the sudden and unexpected attack that they lay low until they could regain their wits. Rosita threw herself into the driver's seat and, ducking low behind the wheel, gunned the truck forward and through the gate. Davy had jumped on the back and was hurling grenades as fast as he could pull out the firing pins. It was all over so quickly that Francisco Lopez could barely believe they had escaped. He stared after the disappearing truck in stunned amazement. Stop shooting! They're out of range now! Oh, they are crazy. Loco to think I believed Rosita Hernandez to be a sweet and harmless girl. Madre de Dios. I wonder how long it'll be before they start chasing us. We can't go too far on this road. Maybe the militia in the next village has been alerted. There's a roadblock. Hmm. I think in a few minutes we go north on foot. Will we be far from the place on the coast I told you about? Only five kilometers across the cane fields. And the boat? Oh, there are a lot of small fishing boats drawn up on the beach. It will be no problem, baby. You know, you sure surprised me today, Rosita. Oh, why? Well, you look as though butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, and yet you moved into battle there like a banshee. You think you haven't surprised me? I think this will do. You can't leave the truck here, otherwise your boyfriend Lopez and his army will be right on our tail. Oh, no, Mother Davy. We can set fire to it, and then the cane field, too. It will confuse them. Good thinking. You know, I reckon you were built for this game. I'll just put a bullet through uh, the fuel pipe. That's it. Now, stand back from the petrol. Bueno. It will easily spread to the cane field, but we must hurry or the fire might trap us. Boy, 
Did you say five kilometers to the coast? We have only walked three yet. Yeah, maybe, but this cane makes the going tough. I wonder how Lopez survived your attack on his quarters. Well, he must have been knocked out, or, or maybe just playing possum. Uh, what the? Get, get down, get oh. down. It's in the chopper out to hunt us down. Get into that clump. Yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. No, no, he didn't see us. I have to be careful in case he comes back, though. Let's carry on. No, wait. I just thought of something. Uh, what's that? If, as you say, Lopez was playing possum, then he must have heard your plans. That explains how he managed to trap us at the house so quickly. You got a good point there. Uh, look. What? Uh, that, that helicopter is landing way over there. Where is the beach, Davy? Lopez will be there already waiting for us. Okay, so we'll sit here and wait for a nightfall. Won't be long now. Yes, we can wait. But I've been thinking about my own position in this. I don't think I want to go with you to America. There is nothing there for me. What is there here for you? <sighs> Two things, if I'm to be honest. Two things? The patriots in the hills. I can be of use to them. Yeah, I can understand that. And what's the other? I didn't dare say it before, but it's you, Davy. Me? But I... <laughs> what is there for you in America? But are you suggesting I stay here in Cuba with you? Fighting with the guerrillas? <laughs> no, never. I couldn't do a thing like that. Davy, you saved me today. Please, let me save you. It was ten years ago when Davy turned away from the coast and went with Rosita Hernandez into the hills. To this day, they are still there, now married, and waiting for the time when their army of guerrillas grows strong enough to flood down to the Cuban plains to fight and win, as their enemy, General Galvez, did before them. As for Commissar Francisco Lopez, he was demoted and a few weeks later killed when a car he was driving ran into a guerrilla ambush. Rosita Anderson fired the fatal shot. Oh, yes, and the vital book, which is what this story is all about. That was placed on my desk a few days after Davy's desertion. It came down a new line of communication he'd already devised. Yeah, Davy was a deserter, but I'm sure we can't hold that against him, because he's still doing us a lot of good where he is. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.